I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and welcome to the drive home to Hawkesbury where I believe every home has a story and I love sharing those stories on real estate in the Hawkesbury with you. Here we share the best ways to add value to your property, how to avoid the common mistakes people make when buying and selling property and how to get the maximum return on your investment with a focus on supporting local business. I live love Hawkesbury and can't wait to get into today's episode with you so let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this video. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy, welcoming you to the drive home to Hawkesbury. Today, I wanted to cover off a topic of rental arrears. It's probably a landlord's worst nightmare and also a tenant's worst nightmare in um, the flip side of that. So we'll just um, explore this together today. From a landlord's perspective, when you own a property, you want to make sure that you know if you have a mortgage on the property that you can afford that so if a tenant defaults on that payment um, the weekly rental or fortnightly or monthly rental it's very difficult you can't go to your bank and I mean you can to a certain extent ask them for an extension of payments but equally it goes down on uh, record that you have been late paying your mortgage equally on the flip side of that the tenant uh, when they're wanting to pay their rent that will be put in either good or poor stead uh, long term if the tenant does not pay their rent on a regular uh, basis as per the lease agreement. When you're entering into a lease agreement with a tenant and a landlord, generally speaking there will be a payment schedule set out so it's going to be nominated fortnightly, weekly, monthly, whatever the lease agreement says that's essentially what the payment is that's expected of that tenant to pay. So the landlord is expecting the tenant to pay the rent on that weekly, fortnightly or monthly schedule and the tenant expects to have that either come out, that rental payment come out of their account or alternatively they make the payments from their bank um, to a direct debit into our trust account. Now with that it sometimes can be a little bit difficult to understand the process because when you start a lease you do have two payments that you'll need to make. One is rental payment and one is bond payment. Now the bond's completely different to the rent nothing to do with the rent but it is a, a bond that is put down on the property and generally it's four weeks or equivalent to four weeks um, rent of the particular property so if it was a hundred dollars a week rent it would be four hundred dollars bond that would need to be paid you would also have to make an advance payment we try and negotiate with the tenants to have um, them two weeks in arrear uh, two weeks <laughs> Is, certainly not there is two weeks in advance when we get started with the lease it starts us off on a good stead with everybody and if there are unforeseen circumstances that then mitigates against that for them so it's always best to be in advance on your payments if not you generally will receive a message or a call or an email from your property manager and it's certainly a system that we have in place to try and maintain the zero rental arrears that we have because you want to make sure that everybody is aware of what the schedule is and what the expectation is from both the landlord and the tenant because if a tenant is um, you know paying their rent regularly and then all of a sudden they don't pay their rent uh, you, you sort of it flags it you think okay well something may have happened uh, we contact them via email phone call and SMS depending on what medium they've chosen at the beginning of the lease and then we're able to identify very quickly as to what the problem may be with the rental payments. It might have just been a bank issue for example they've changed their bank accounts or something but generally we find that either their work situations change or they've been unwell or something sort of triggered that non-payment of rent tenants don't want to not pay their rent um, and generally there is a reason behind that but equally you need to manage that process and that's what we do is we send out messages to these tenants and get in contact with them to ensure that everybody is on that same page and you know we don't want tenants feeling as though every fortnight I get a message from you you know we are two days in arrears and um, our rent is due 
Unfortunately, if your rent is in arrears, you will get that message until the rent is caught up. Um, and it's only on the time period that it falls. So if you're a weekly payment, you'll get that weekly message until you're up to date with your payments. But equally, fortnightly, monthly, um, you'll get that message on that time frame. And once you know that's been caught up, then you don't receive the messages and it's just a lot easier for people. But sometimes it's just a little bit frustrating for the tenant, I understand, from that perspective. However, there is a process in place and everybody needs to appreciate that, as I'm sure that they do. Um, equally, we understand that there might be a transfer difference with the bank, but sometimes you, know, you need to think ahead and make an allowance for that. So if you know your bank's not going to pay the rent on time and you're going to get that message the next day because the rent wasn't paid on the day that it was due, then maybe just change those payments to a day or two before so that you know that you're going to have that payment made at the correct time so you don't receive the rental arrear messages because it's not really nice receiving a message that you're in arrears even though you paid your rent um, knowingly that it was going to get into the account a couple of days after it was due so um, that's uh, just a little bit of a tip there and the other tip I'd give you is in regards to the rental payments if you have been struggling with those rental payments and you've contacted your property manager generally speaking they will enter into some sort of payment plan for you so you may want to keep up with your regular weekly fortnightly or monthly rental but also you may want to add to that so if you can top in an extra five ten twenty fifty dollars per week which will get you back up into um, the positive on the rental ledger that's always a good thing and sometimes too you know if people aren't working at Christmas time and they know that's going to be the case a couple of months heading out of Christmas time they will start putting the extra money into the account those sorts of things so there's lots of ways to skin a cat as they say but um, we're happy to explore those um, options with you we tailored the property management experience for both the landlord and the tenant because we want both parties to be happy happy but equally we want to ensure that the expectation levels are met on both parts and also <coughs> pardon me also from us as a property manager that our job is being done correctly and that we're managing the risk for the landlord and also looking after the tenant because they're looking after the landlord so that's my little bit of advice for today i hope everybody's well and i look forward to catching up with you on the next show Thank you so much for taking time out listening to today's episode. If you have any questions on the process of buying, selling, leasing or strata management, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and I'd really appreciate it if you could spread the word by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends. I'm Rachel Goldsworthy and I look forward to catching up with you on the next episode of the Drive Home to Hawkesbury.